Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, I know I'm a little bit, um, a little bit youth pastor style. I used to say, "What's up?" Okay, okay never mind. Okay, uh, can we stand up together and let's grab at least five people. Say, "Happy New Year!" and glad, glad to see you. 우리 부모님도 한번 인사 다섯 분씩 인사 나누시길 부탁드리겠습니다. All right, say hi. What's up? You're growing too much. We're getting slim. Looks beautiful. Okay. When I was, when I was a high school uh, student in Korea, um, interesting thing is even I went to male high school, and uh, the teachers actually they uh, give us uh, give us uh, with a, a few words. Right. The first word is this one. Stand up. Those who like their face has been changed. That means the plastic surgery they had uh, during the winter or summer vacation. And please come up. You know, I hope that we, we don't have, right? Anyone? <coughs> no? Naturally, you guys are beautiful, right? No? 우리 부모님들 오늘 와주셔서 진심으로 감사하고 제가 가끔 가다가 썰렁한 이 말씀을 하실 때 같이 웃어주셨으면 좋겠습니다. Anyway, uh, I prepared some sermon uh, before we uh, share the sermon. Um, you know, we had about three weeks, a great, great, meaningful, fun activity, which is called the Winter Juniper School Musical and Enrichment. It's been about 10 years. Can you believe? Almost 10 years. And we have uh, had, we've done many of uh, the musicals and shows. And meanwhile, we do um, provide a lot of, uh, you know, academic programs, like you know, mock test programs, rigorous, intensive you know, coursework, so that you are going to um, support yourselves and even to prepare for next coming semester. That is the main ultimate goal of each breeze, it is called summer, winter, the program. Uh, 오늘 영어로 제가 좀 설교할 때좀 불편함이 있어도 좀 우리 부모님들이나 또 신입생들 조금 힘든 우리 저학년 특히 I apologize. Today my sermon a little bit, little bit the youth group style, okay? 우리 저학년들은 내가 I guarantee, I promise, uh, I'm gonna preach probably next week, not this week. I will, I will, you know, provide your style uh, next week, you know, my sermon style. So 잘 이해해서 포커스했으면 좋겠습니다. This is the, uh, the, uh, the photo we, before we had a uh, musical performance. This time, you know, great uh, performance we uh, experienced together. And uh, after watching the you know, musical, everyone's really kind of uh, impressed and really, um, let's say, special uh, to encourage each other. And we really happy, satisfied by our achievement and the cooperation together. Because a lot of reasons, there are some reasons, one of the reasons is the teacher support. Mr. John and many teachers, uh, Ms. Joyce and Ms. Stephanie, the, you know, each teacher, Mr. Tommy, the, you know, all teachers got involved and support as a different role, as a, a responsible, I mean, the mentor and support with their talents uh, to, you know, come to the, uh, the great achievement, which is the you know, musical performance. And uh, the younger students, you guys work together and support as a team and uh, the chorus choir a lot of harmony and you know, ensemble ensembles as style you know and the um, some the pictures like you know we could see that you're great great you know, teamwork and learning from each other like all the student younger students and the same peers I um, mean, we learn each other. Please, please join this great opportunity. You know, every summer, winter time, I know it's like you want to take some rest, but like, you know, uh, when you become an adult or college student, all the time remember not to study, friendship, mentorship, your activities, all the spiritual programs, you know, that will be great your the high school, middle school, elementary school life memories you're going to have. And then another picture is like, you know, um, Ira, she's not here today, uh, she's a little bit sick, so she made a great job, and uh, um, she uh, introduced all the, you know, each stage, you know, with her uh, great uh, sing singings, and definitely um, uh, the main character, um, Mary Poppins. And also, the, we're really happy to see 
uh, our students study, you know, habit. <laughs> you know, they would focus on study, like, you know, staying in the uh, IT lab, two, one, and checking out their, uh, you know, all the study, you know, stuff, and, you know, take some rest. They want to field trip a few times and really enjoy, enjoy and memorable uh, their enrichment programs. Uh, thank you so much for your great job and achievement. I believe uh, some of you guys received the, uh, some uh, report, academic reports. So uh, let's work together this semester. And then those who haven't received, you're going to get it uh, pretty soon. 자, 우리 다 같이, 우리 제안, 어, 창세기 12장 1절부터 4절, 어, 한번 읽도록 하겠습니다. Um, next time, I would like to encourage the uh, teachers, uh, homeroom teacher, please sit right next to your uh, students, because uh, we're going to, sometimes we're going to have a prayer time and support each other. All right, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. So let me um, read this Bible verse for you. And, uh, 한국말로도 읽지는 않겠지만, 한번 생각해 보시면서, 창세기 12장 1절부터 4절, 한번 보도록 하겠습니다. 아, 유명한 구절이죠? 네. Genesis chapter 12. It's a Hall of Fame Bible verse. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. Let me read this one. The Lord had said to Abraham, Leave your native country, your relatives, in your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. You will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abraham went, was 75 years old when he left Haran. Today, my key verse is this one. Verse um, 3, all the families on earth will be blessed through you. This is the key verse I would like to emphasize on today with you. 오늘 저는 창세기 12장 3절에 너의 모든 그 가족이, 민족이 너를 통하여 축복을 받을 것이다 라는 그 구절을 토대로 말씀을 준비했습니다. We just started 2024 and brand new semester. 2024 spring semester. Fresh start. The topic is, title is Fresh Start. In order to prepare this message, I was thinking about my life and everyone's life. From we, you know, born on this planet until we see Jesus Christ. We don't know the when and time. Sometimes earlier, sometimes late, maybe in terms of our perspective. And then our life is not just one set, which means we often go to a different location. Frankly, I don't like moving. So we actually, uh, we've been working on this uh, renovation project since actually last year, you cannot believe, since when? September 2023. And it's been still going on. And some parts are still fixing, repairing, and on and on. And then we're just trying to purchase and fit up each classroom, some students and teachers a request and parents too. You know, actually, the, uh, in order to settle down even this facility, it takes more than five months. What about our life? Your, my, your life, my life. Like age, the first grader to senior students, even college students and adults. When you get married, do you feel like settle down? You gotta live in the one house permanently? Not really. When you get married, even job requires maybe you gotta relocate to certain location to go or commute every day, which means life. Like kind of living as a, it is called immigrant life. 우리의 삶이 매 순간 살아가면서 이민자의 모습. 우리가 어느 순간에 한 곳에 있지 않은 상태에서 매일 매년 매 순간 우리는 이동해야 되고 적응해야 되고 거기에 맞춰 살아가는 우리의 삶을 볼수 있습니다. Today, I like to uh, share about my life and it's a lot of teachers maybe get engaged with this topic. It is immigrant life. Because uh, I grew up until age 20 years in Korea, South Korea. And then I went to the States when I was 20. 
and until about the mid 40 years. So I came back around that time and I feel I consider myself, I feel a stranger. Even though I grow, I born in Korea, I grow in Korea, but majority of my time, my life, even friends, my teachers, all kind of important that my communities is what? Not sure. I feel like America. I know my wife because sometimes teasing me, you are not second generation. You are not, you are not, you are, you are born in Korea. Why you like, looks like pretending kind of second generation, you know, Korean American, something like that. And I go to McDonald's, right? And I order like this, um, uh, Big Mac set to uh, uh, zero cola hana juseyo. Oh, 재수 없어. My wife said all the time they said that way, all right? It's like, um, it's like, you know, this is the uh, kind of like culture, what I learned from the States and even I grew up like that way. My school I went in the LA, Los Angeles, a pretty much like Asian, like so many Asians, but the little K town, Korea town too. But my school, there are only about 13 like Asian students, especially the uh, Korean people, less than 10 students. So predominant, the white, Hispanic, the students, I had to survive in that community and try to speak in English. Like so much time, I put it on my efforts, on my education. One of the history, I mean, stories of what I learned when I visited, actually, it is called San Diego Place in California. If you look at this map, and I mean, the uh, picture, then on the right side picture, on what? Caution, yellow sign. 조심하라는 사인이 하나 있죠. Interesting is this one, this what? Right border place. It's like five freeway is going toward the south. It's like, like Mexico border line. And this sign is getting bigger, bigger, bigger when we get close to the border line. Why? But three people join the hands and then they cross the what? Freeway. You know, one, one way about 10 the roads, streets, lines. And then round trip is about 20, which means the people, they crossed the freeway, which is the highway. 고속도로를 한 20차선 되는 데를 낮이고 밤이고 불법 이민자들은 국경을 넘고 그것을 통과해서 미국으로 들어오려고 하는 사람들이 많다라는 것입니다. 특별히 멕시코 쪽의 국경에는. Why? What do you think? Why they cross the border line and with their kids, infant kids, younger kids, even older elders, they cross the border line for one reason, what? For their family, for their new opportunity. It is called what? A new, fresh start. Regardless of their age, cultures, even what? They want to get restarted. I want to have a new opportunity for my family, my education, my, also my future. So they decided, but government, they built what? Built what? It's a huge, a tall barrier, borderline area. However, they crossed the borderline and they tried to settle down and start fit, start survive, start to support their family members. How? Working more than 12 hours, it is called immigrant life. Even the, uh, the white people, they, their ancestors actually came from Europe in American history. It's like they, their forefathers, fathers, they relocate from Europe to the, uh, what? It's America, which means the first gen, the second gen generation, they went through a lot of suffering finance, language, cultures, and people relationship. So the people, their, their forefathers, which is ancestors, they were sacrificed, made, bared great fruit for next generations, which is what? Opportunity. So it is called America is a land of opportunity. Opportunity. Sometimes I watch the movies, it is called Immigrant Life, the stories. You guys watch, probably some of you guys, Minari. Right? Minari라는 아마 한동안 되게 유명했었죠 한국에서도. This actually movie on right side picture. So if you have a chance, please watch it. Seriously, you can learn about culture, even more diverse culture, immigrant life. You could learn from this movie to understand immigrants, foreigners who live in in South Korea right now. Because you never experience about certain things that you cannot understand others. Pain, suffering. Even joy, happiness, you, if you went, go through, went through, then you could get engaged with the people who are in that situation spot. 
Minari, this is the, what, the father trying to settle down his new family location to Georgia. And what is like farming, field, never ever done in Korea, but no choice. Working, but fail. A lot of things. Grandma came and fit language barrier issue. Second gen kid is speaking in Korean, I mean English, but like trying to understand the grandma and support. But through the, the uh, religious with intimate relationship with the grandma, the second gen, the kids, they start to like, respect the grandma and the father. Past lives, this one also, one, I mean, they were born in Korea, South Korea, but uh, the girl, woman uh, went to Toronto in Canada. Uh, but then, then the guy, they actually, each other, they met each other in elementary school time, like each other, and all the time talk about future, but one day they've been you know, apart. But like, you know, one day they miss each other. However, in that spot situation, you know, the, the, the woman they got married, actually the American person, white person. However, one day they met somehow through the Facebook. So they, one day they got together, but they miss each other, but completely different their situation. You know, ending the movie is they feel really sorry and they feel sad. And then what they said, when we get together in the future, not right now, maybe we could, you know, fall in love and then we could love each other. Maybe get married. Really, you know, immigrant life and then this, you know, different situation. Like, oh, they're in a relationship and make change it, their relationship too. Another great movie is a Chinese American, the movie. Is the, it is called uh, the Joy Luck Club. Um, this movie is about the four women they uh, relocate to from China to San Francisco in you know in America. They talk you know talk about their lives to their second generations, and then completely they they didn't understand what their mom and you know talking about this one, but you know they start to know each other through what cultures, languages, and start to second generation. They respect. Their first gen, their sacrifice too. Pachinko, and this is also Korean Japanese descendants. So, you know, we don't know about their history, but suffering generation, they went through that. Now, even they're in their facing situation. So, um, Korea, the government now consider about their descendants, how to support right now. And once again, it is called diaspora, which means Korea, even other countries, you know, they're separated, all the scattered out, and what? Living in changing the really country, different country as a strangers, to, trying to survive. I remember when I was a youth pastor in the Los Angeles area, I used to teach and preach and, you know, share the, my the ministry, support 1.5 generation, even first gen, even the second generation. Interesting is, each generation has a really, really cultural issues, conflict, and difficulties. It is called the first 1.5 generation, those who were born in Korea and grew up until age probably around 13, 12, about sixth grader, fifth grader, but they go to the America with their parents actually. So they speak in, it is called bilingual, which means Korean language and the American language. But which is bilingual skills, and you know, multicultural skills, pretty good, right? Seems like good. But however, there are huge bitterness, resentment in their hearts. One reason, what is it? Lack of adjustment. It is hard to speak one language fully with their like, professionalism, good sufficient language level. Not Korean, not maybe English. I don't know, I, am I the Korean? Am I American? A lot of mixed feeling. It is called identity crisis. Even second generation too. They were born in America, and then I speak in English. Well, I feel like completely, I'm, I'm not the American. I, I'm not the Asian, the, the Korean, but I feel like it's American, but somehow, as long as I grew up, if you go to college, I feel I don't belong here. Sense of community, I don't feel like that way. So, like the majority, like second generation, what I taught, is like they feel like, oh, I don't belong to this community. My father, my mom, all the time working, more than 12 hours. Lack of relationship I do have. I hate my family. I hate going home. I even go to school. 
So my ministry, I spend so much time, like enormous time, I put my efforts building up relationship. Teachers, please relate, the, re, remember this one. How do you reach out to your students? Build up to intimate relationship with your students as a mentors, as a dear, respectful, and maybe honor your, their teachers and Christian mentors. Then they'll start to open their hearts for you. What I spend, then spend more time, kids, they start to talk to me. Well, my language skill was, is not, it was the English skill, was not that good at the time. Actually, my broken English, actually spoken English, like everything's grammar is broken, and then vocab is quite limited. I said, welcome to the home, like that kind of way. It's like everyone's laughing when I talk about the message. Now, it was not the message, the laughing, but to start to laugh at me, seriously. And they, they call me as a fop. If you know the fop, the, the <laughs> anyways, I got those, know that. Anyways, like, so, you know, they tease me, like, something like that. But, once again, when, I, when they face this one, identity crisis, cultural gap, language issue, between first generation, second generation, 1.5 generation, second generation, all the time, we're struggling. And the ministers, including myself, we came to them, and we started to talk, and open their, our hearts, and pray for them. They spend more time, take them out to hang out, and have lunch and dinner until well, sometime midnight, we spend a lot of time. And then they start to share this message. Broken hearts. My father, my mom, never ever spoke to me. Never ever they will open their hearts and share, listen, my bitterness, my difficulties. There's no one who listened to my words. It's a resentment, bitterness, all the difficulties bother them to move on next stage. Our jobs, the ministers, trying to build the, become the bridge role between their parents and second generation, first generation, 1.5 generation. How? It is called love. And now all the time we encourage them, let's get restarted, a fresh start in your age. Guess what? Asian students being influenced by their gener father's generation. It is called Confucius the generation, which means like they feel like the, uh, they're all the time study. You know, that that's the best way they could please their parents. So it is called education. What the theory is that Asian zeal, you know, the first generation, second generation, point five generation, they went through a lot of crisis and, you know, fighting, battling with their parents, the rebellious stage, but one day become mature stage. And then what? They start to say, I would like to study more and please my parents. Achieve my goal. I'd like to support my parents, my families. Many are Asian students, a lot of you know, people said they're really good at study. Why? One of the reasons, theories, it is called Asian zeal to respect their parents, to please what they parents ask. Is it good or bad? I don't know. But this is a traditional culture from Asian you know, society community. It's an immigrant life. All the time we say that, what? The refresh start. Why? Life moving, relocating every moment. The story of Abraham is the same thing. It's like his life is not settled down one location. It's interesting is this one. It's about, look at this map that he started from Uru, it's a Ur, U-R place. And his father, he took his entire family members to, it is called Babylon. You know, this time Babylon is like New York. It's like pro prosperity, you know, town, and all the entertaining stuff, and the industry, like the boom, like a lot of money projections they had. However, Idolism, it was like a lot of, you know, like some idols, even the temptation, a lot of sinful city, you know, they had, so it took to where? It's a harem. And harem, in this time location, the, the Abraham's father, is his, he passed away. But in this situation, God came to Abraham's life and called him, I will call you what? Abraham, not Abraham anymore. 
And you need to go to a place where the location, I'll point out, you never been there because I've been there. I knew you how to survive, how to be there successful. Go follow my direction. And this is the, uh, the chapter we just read. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, what the Bible said, The Lord has said to Abraham, Leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family, go to the land, I will show you. Can you imagine? You pretty much you settle down here, you know your friends, you know your parents, you know your lot of neighbors, but feel like everything's done, but one day your father, your mom, and God came to your life and leave from this place. Where? I don't know. Here is what the Bible said. I will make you, then go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. This one promise, verbal promise, no evidence, verbal promise. I will bless you and make you famous. You will be a blessing to others. That which means you will be a contagious person who bless others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. Which means what? I will protect you. Protect you from any situations. All the families on the earth will be blessed through you. You will become epic center, which what? The blessing other generations. And this is the really impressive statement. So, therefore, Abraham, leave, departed, as the Lord had instructed, followed, showed, demonstrated. And Lot, which is his cousin, went with him. Abraham was how many? How old he, was he? 75 years old when he left Haran. 75 years? It was not young. Well, actually, as long as I am aging, what I feel that my body's physical condition was quite limited. Seriously, I enjoy the snowboarding. Seriously, like about 10 years ago, no hurts anymore than knee, my joint, but now I feel like pain in the joint, seriously. I need some rest. Even my memory skill, I used to memorize really fast, but really hard right now. Why? Wow, it's hard to memorize by verse. Which means that as long as aged, which is getting aged, I feel lack of confidence I do have. But Abraham, age was about 75 years old. God came to his life and command, leave your hometown. What do you mean? A right, fresh new start with God's direction. I want to encourage you guys, we're going to start a new semester, brand new semester, brand new week. Next 19 weeks, can you believe we don't have a spring break this year? Oh, but we're going to have a, <laughs> so it's a lot here soon, but 19 weeks goes fast. Trust me, we're going to finish up this semester really, really fast because time flies, goes really fast. However, this community, we're going to experience what? Life, a joy, meaningful, in all the moments. And 2024, we're going to have a refresh, a fresh start from today to become God's people and leaders. Let's have a fresh start, study habit. Those who don't have a good management skill, good your language skills, even your relationship struggling, let's have a fresh start to have good relationship. In mindset, let's have a fresh start to have mindset and also attitude. If you have a rebellious attitude, let's change it, correct that. In life philosophy, you all the time focus on college or ranking driven, outcome driven, let's fix it and more focus on processing and fresh faith in Christ, in God, to trust and follow, obey to what God wants us, you and I, to do in our lives. And this is the, um, this is the, uh, the, the, hold on, no, 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 no. And then we're going to have the fresh start from today to make this 2024 spring semester and most wonderful semester in your life and this new campus to praise the Lord when we are finished up this semester. Let's pray heads.